Molly Hammer and the Unity Band. Whew. Have you been transported? Come back. Come back. We're here. You can find Molly and her music online, Molly Hammer. And we're just so blessed to have her here with us today, aren't we? <clears throat> we like it in unity that we're not just a Sunday thing. You can take everything home with you, the consciousness, the music, <laughs> everything. So what does that really mean, let go, let God? We say that a lot, let go, let God. When do you apply that? Just breathe in for a moment and think about the times in life when you apply that to yourself, if you do. If not, you have a great invitation today. In what kind of circumstances do you say to yourself, all right, Aaron, let go, let God? What do they look like? What is that really saying to let go and let God? I had an adventure this week on the Unity cruise, and I had an experience right before taking the cruise where, you know, when you get ready for a trip and it's a really important trip and you put things in very special places? So I had one of those experiences where I packed early, did all of this stuff, was all ready to go, but had a very, very busy week. And <clears throat> when it got to be time to put my passport in the right place, which is in my purse to go on this trip, I couldn't find it. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And I looked all over the whole house. I looked in every little nook and cranny, spent much of the morning searching and you know how it is when you search for something and you, you really look around at your space and you think, I've pretty much gone to every place at least once or twice and I haven't seen it. Well, I have a few practices that I incorporate that usually work in a jiffy, some spiritual practices when that happens, but this time none of them worked. So I thought there must be another spiritual practice that I'm supposed to intuit here because certainly the answer is not that I'm not going on this conference cruise that all of my peers are going on. Because if you've ever been a teacher, could you imagine at a moment when you're about to have summer, um, so your summer break, right? Your time to renew, restore. And if you know any teachers, you know that there's never a break. Summer is a time to do extra planning. It's a time to regroup. It's a time to reform everything within your being to gear up, to embrace and behold the next evolution of what this ministry of a job is, right? And we all have our own things that are like this. But imagine if the day right before summer break started and someone said, oh, we're not going to have it anymore. We're going to go to the year-round thing. Could you imagine what your field would do? Right? And everyone knows what this is like in some way or another. But that's kind of like what the conference is each year. You get together with your ministers and there is such an immense amount of support that goes on. It is like a week of oxygen. I went to my first conference and I thought, ooh, I'm going to plan three or four talks. I'm going to get so ahead of the game so that when I come back, I have all these talks to do. Well, the Sunday that I came back from that first conference, that was my first question and answer Sunday. <laughs> like, you guys write the questions, I'll answer them. Because this week isn't going to be a written talk. You got it? So I'm looking around for my passport. Can't find it anywhere. But it's an important day. This is the last day before I leave town. And on this day, we have our open mic night, the village mic that happens over in the bookstore that has just been a fantastic spiritual and uh, community experience. And we also have the students' graduation, our ministerial students from Unity Institute. So I have a couple of choices here. I have the choice to either continue to look for my passport in all of those places that I've looked and not found it, I have the choice to fret and have, have a problem with this. I could start thinking about what I'm going to do if I can't find it beyond doing the preliminary research of getting my birth certificate from Indiana in the morning and all that stuff, right? So I have those choices. And I sat there and I thought about how much time I had spent looking for it. And the concept of let go, let God came in. And I stood in a moment at my door and thought, this is a crazy thing that maybe only I would do. Anyone, if I asked them, is this a good idea? They would probably say no. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the house now. I'm going to go to work. 
I'm going to work for my day. I'm going to go to the village, Mike, and then I'm going to go to the student's graduation. And I know that when I come back from it, I'm going to walk right into the house, and I'm going to walk right up to the place where my passport is, and I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to put it in my bag so that I make my 4 a.m. flight. And I just decided that's what I'm going to do. And then I carefully shared throughout the night with some other power practitioners how I was going to be finding my passport when I got home. And, and took the oohs and said, pray with me on that, because I know it's there. And then I got another insight throughout the day and the afternoon, and I realized to myself, I realized the more I fully embrace each of these moments, and I am affirming and I am declaring, the more fun I have at the student's graduation, the more I embrace these moments and become fully present is equivalent to the speed at which I will find my passport. <laughs> and that was my affirmation. <laughs> the more fun I have. So when I thought, oh, should I just leave right now? Should I just skip out right after? No, the more fun I have is the speed at which I will find my passport. Are you getting the metaphysics here? You can fill in the blanks. The more whatever I have is the speed at which I will find my so what happened? I walked into the house, and I'm going to make that part short, but I walked into the house, just closed my eyes, started walking, and of course went to this little drawer that could not possibly have a passport because we haven't used those drawers in ages, and they're in the little corner of the house. And I just opened this empty little side drawer, and there are two passports just sitting right there. So did I say, thank you, God? I said, no, <laughs> for how they got there, <clears throat> but we won't talk about that. But... <clears throat> how two passports could get into a little drawer with nothing in them in a closet. But anyway, so it was just a great spiritual practice. And I had the opportunity to embrace the God of infinite design, the God of infinite design, and to bring it into a deeper experience in my conscious mind so no more can I attach to the planning, can I attach to the desires, can I attach to the limitations of my ego, but more and more in each moment, like each of us are called to, I can attach myself to a greater reality an expansive reality of being. So what does it mean when we say, let go, let God? Is it easy? On this conference cruise, I had the blessing to hear a sermon, a talk to the Unity Ministers from Dr. Roger Teal, the Reverend Dr. Roger Teal. He is from the Center for Spiritual Living in Denver, Colorado. He runs a massive spiritual center. And he gave us this amazing talk about ease and grace and I'm gonna give that to you. The piece that was the big nugget that he gave that sat with me very deeply is that we pray, when we pray and we launch our prayers, we launch our visions, we often say with ease and grace, kind of like let go, let God, right? So da 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 here's my prayer, here's my vision, la 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 healing, la 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 abundance, la 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 relationship, la 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 la, fill in the blank. With ease and grace. <clears throat> And then he challenged us. What is that really about? <clears throat> What's the ease and grace thing really about? Has anyone experienced the part of life that doesn't feel like ease? Okay, so stand up if you haven't ever experienced that. <laughs> Has anyone not wanted to come to church and be pointed out? <laughs> Me, I've never had any problem with ease. If you are a human being on this spiritual plane, experiencing yourself as an evolving being into God consciousness, you have probably experienced in life what you would not call ease. So he challenged us and said, when we say with ease and grace, are we putting conditions on our prayer and saying, sweet spirit, I will grow, I will heal, I will evolve this much, but if it takes more than ease, keep me down here because I only want to evolve and transform with ease and grace. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? Do we limit our good? Do we put the top on how high we can fly and the places we can go on the healings that can occur when we say only with ease? It was a magnificent moment where we had to ask ourselves, do we want total transformation? Are we willing to abandon ourselves into God, the God of your definition, the God of your highest concept, even beyond the words you would put on that concept of God? Because we know truly that God is an experience, right? 
God is not a noun. God is not a man in the sky. God is not even the highest definition of what I or you or anyone on this planet could put words to. Do we want total transformation and abandonment into God? Or are we going to put conditions on it and to say, help prosper me, help heal me, help grow me, but only if it feels good? Let go and let God is not a statement, not a prayer, not an affirmation for the lighthearted. It is not something to be used lightly, is it? When we look at it like this, it is something full and complete of, in depth. There is a, a book that we're going to be doing our Adventures in Spirituality series in October on, and it's called Handbook for the Spirit. Every year we go into these adventures where we gather in homes and here on Sunday mornings and online, and we do a book study. And this year it's called Handbook for the Spirit, and it has writings by a whole bunch of authors. One I want to share with you today I had the danger of reading my part that I was writing questions for on my, my trip. And that means that all of the sermons might be used up before October gets here. <laughs> but the rest of it will be new because other people are writing those questions for us now. Andrew Harvey, in his writing, Burning for God, he says, why are we so frightened and mistrustful of surrendering to the divine? I think it's the fear of suffering if you read the accounts of most authentic mystics, you see that the transition from ordinary human consciousness into divine human consciousness is always accompanied by trial, ordeal, and renunciation, sometimes by disease and extreme physical suffering, and nearly always by great mental distress. Any transformation in nature costs a lot. Every resurrection is preceded by a crucifixion. I think that when people begin to intuit what will be demanded of them, not by a sadistic, cruel God, but by the law of growth in the universe. They become terrified. Did you think you were going to have this much fun today? They see that all, they see that living for God will involve a kind of death. That is why the practices of meditation and service and prayer are so important. Those practices can open a being to the miracle of divine love and help that being enough to, in turn, suffer enough to be transformed. What does it look like to say, let go and let God? What does it look like to say, with grace and ease or something better, or something better, and sweet spirit, sweet universal intelligence, you know the depths of me more than I could know myself. You know my soul's commitment, my soul's purpose on this plane, on this planet, what I'm here to be, what I'm here to do. So be in me, draw to me every experience needed and necessary for the awakening of my heart and my mind to the extent of my conscious capability to my conscious capacity, and if I am daring enough, will I pray and expand my territory and give me the consciousness first for that expansion? Amen? When we imply ease, there is a paradox here. The greatest ease we know, the greatest challenge we know, oftentimes the greatest gifts come from the greatest challenges. Can anyone sit with that? Can anyone feel that? That sometimes the greatest gifts come with the greatest challenges. I mean, if, there, if you've, you're a woman here and you've ever had a baby, just physically, right? In our, our meditation group this week, we held the space for a beautiful baby being born. And then I found out this morning, is a nine pound something baby boy. That mama knows what it's like to pray for something and let go of the, let go of the ease part because you want it to be coming, right? That's how life is. We're the same as the nature that is all around us. That is the nature that is within us. But there's a reason that traditional Christianity and that a lot of traditional spiritual practices call it the devil, hell, Satan, ego, anything negative that is pulling against you. There's a reason it has gotten those archetypes. There is a reason that this resistance to suffering has gotten some really scary pictures, paintings, whatever it is, whatever it is that may be even lightly embedded in you and your 
consciousness, even if it's ego we call bad, right? Whatever it is, there's a reason it's gotten some nasty names and some funny figures. It's not that it's sadistic. It's more that it challenges the human consciousness, the physical consciousness, to go beyond, to reveal and heal the illusions of separation, to heal states of conscious fear and insecurity, judgments, condemnations, and to burst through everything that we have thought to be a boundary. Emmett Fox from Sermon on the Mount said, it does not matter what the thing may be that is standing between us and our true contact with God, it must go. Will you breathe with me for a moment? Put your hand on your heart or wherever you feel it and breathe into whether or not you know what it is that must go or not. Say, sweet spirit, you know what it is and say with me, it must go together, breathing in. It must go. Amen. This practice may rock you to the core. It may challenge who you are, your identity. It may reveal things you never thought possible to reveal. You may accomplish things you never thought were even in your vision. But one thing is certain. The words of scripture, where it brings out this truth. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. So the first thing in there is to say, even though this may seem like you may be risking everything, and I say risk is releasing insecurity for spiritual knowing, even though it may seem like you're risking everything in this abandonment into spirit, have no fear. Have no fear. I believe it says have no fear because this is the type of experience, the spiritual experience where a baby's being born. And you say to that mother, have no fear. Your body knows how to do this. Your mind knows how to do this. We know how to support you. It's the same kind of fear that when you're going up a roller coaster that you actually put yourself on, you start thinking, what was I doing? And then you get up to the top and you start going down and you go, oh, let me hear it again. You come down and you go, now, now one that goes upside down. Ready, you go. <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of fear. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. This also implies that the Father, that God consciousness, that absolute source, that the intelligence of the universe is happy to give this to us. Do you think that God consciousness would be happy to be the presence of the or, right, which one is it? Which one is it for the all-knowing consciousness to midwife us into a new reality? Which consciousness is it? Which experience is it if the Father is happy to give this to us? Well, in unity, we don't teach that we have a sadistic Father that wants us all to suffer. We embrace the experience that we have a source that creates amazing roller coasters and fantastic journeys of birthing and light in this human experience. So then it says, fear not, little flock, for there's the Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. What do you get if you go on this adventure? You get the, the kingdom. Do you think there's anything left out of the kingdom? Nothing. Not a thing. Not a thing that could possibly be needed, could possibly let, be left out of the kingdom. Now, we don't know much about the kingdom in our minds here sitting in this room to say, well, I could speculate that it's like this. A lot of people, when you think of the kingdom, they start thinking of the when I'm dead, when I'm gone. Think about it in spiritual consciousness. What is the kingdom? There may be a lot of blanks that we may not be able to fill in until we're in another form, but... What we can know is that it's good and that it's everything. It's good with a capital G, and it's everything. So, in the words of Abraham Heschel, I share with you this quote. And if you don't know him, I want to tell you, Abraham Heschel is, 
He was a Polish-born American rabbi. He was a Jewish theologian, an activist, a mystic, a teacher, professor of Jewish ethics and mysticism. He worked side by side with Martin Luther King. In fact, he presented Judaism and World Peace Award to Martin Luther King in 1965. He was a teacher. He says this, our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. Would you say with me, everything is phenomenal. Together, everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Together, everything is incredible. Are you willing to be amazed? Breathe in with me. I am ready for the life. I am ready for the job. I am ready for the family. I am ready for the relationships. I am ready for the abundance. I am ready for the greatness. I am ready for the spiritual gifts. I am ready for the ministry that Spirit has for me. Namaste.